Hey everybody, welcome to my news of the day. This is going to be news stories gathered up over the last few days. Uh, I think it was like three days ago, my last news of the day. Um, it's a bit somber today, which I'll explain at the end of this video. Uh, and to start, Eddie Shack, the great Eddie Shack. Um, wasn't the greatest hockey player, but what a great personality. Um, he was a good... Um, a third line type player, a banger, and uh, he had a few points, but I mean, he wasn't a big star um, elite hockey player. But Eddie Schack, who uh, was an entertainer, he was very entertaining, and if, even if you didn't like that he was on the Leafs or whatever team he was playing for, uh, you still liked Eddie Schack. Uh, and I'll never forget, uh, clear the track for Eddie Schack. I think he did that in a commercial, and I always, whenever I hear Eddie Schack's name or see his picture, that's what I think in my head is clearing the track for Eddie Schack. Um, some, uh, I believe in the 50s and 60s there were a lot of uh, fights between him and John Ferguson. They had a bit of a rivalry, and um, yeah, Montreal should uh, definitely know who Eddie Schack is. Uh, Montreal-Toronto exhibition game is tonight, so the exhibition season, three days of exhibition games, starts tonight with three games. Um, you know, honestly, I know it's the Edmonton uh, Calgary game at, uh, at starting at 10:30 here Eastern Time. Montreal is at 8 p.m. Eastern Time against Toronto, and I think it's Pittsburgh and somebody else playing at four o'clock. So uh, four o'clock Eastern Time is when hockey season kicks off um, with these exhibition games. So check them out; they're all on Sportsnet, I believe, and other stations. But Sportsnet is carrying everything. Um, to get into all the, the uh, this stuff, uh, the Habs had to cut two people off of their roster from the Phase 3. They had 34 guys in, uh, in camp, and they needed to, 33 guys, and they needed to come down to 31. So to get there, they uh, cut Josh Brook and Laurent Dauphin. Uh, so they will, they are not at Phase 4, ca uh, phase four in the bubble. Um, they went home, I guess. Uh, sad for them, but they uh, are not surprised. They had to cut... Um, they had to cut two players. You would expect that they were going to cut guys like that, and we just didn't know who it was going to be. But it turns out to be Brooke and Dauphin. Now, there's an article I read yesterday about um, Max Domi and where he's going to play. He has been lining up. Well, when he started, he was on the fifth-line center. And the last few days, he's been lining up third-line center, fourth-line center, excuse me, with Weiss and Wheel on his wings. And I have said that that is probably... Not going to be the way it's uh, it's going to end up when the games start, and he'll probably be on the wing on the third line. That was my opinion. A lot of people thought the same thing, or that he'd be centering the third line. But according to Claude Julian, he's trying to get well-balanced lines because against Pittsburgh, the first two games anyway, they don't have the um, they can't match lines because they're going to be the away team. So um, he wants to have four balanced lines that he can roll at any time against any of the lines. That he's facing. So that means that KK and Domi are both also going to be centers. And um, yeah, according to Julian, yes, Domi's going to be a fourth line center. He's going to break down like this to Tardino Gallagher, which we all know and expect, Drew and Suzuki and Armia, who have been also together the whole training camp, phase three, and uh, Byron KK Lekkinen. Sometimes it's Lekkinen on that side, Byron on that side. Don't know how that what that means. But it seems like Byron K.K. Lekkinen, and we're left with Wies, Domi, and Wheel. And it seems like that's how we're going into um, the series against Pittsburgh, is that he wants to have some experience, some youth, and some grit on each line. And definitely on Domi's line, Domi's the youth, Wheel's the experience, um, and skill, excuse me, skill. So grit and experience, skill, and youth. And he wants to have that on each line. I mean, you kind of look at it. KK's the youth. Byron is the uh, skill. And he's the grit and defense. So, like, the lines are balanced. Anyways, that's how apparently it's going to be. So um, don't be shocked when you see Domi as the fourth liner. I don't know what that means for ice time. Usually fourth line gets, what, about 12 minutes a game. So I don't know if you're going to be balancing out the ice time a little bit more also. We're going to find out as soon as tonight. Next up, Coyotes and GM uh, John Chaka part ways. And that's a nice way of putting it, that they parted ways. I don't really know what to make of this situation. Uh, Chaka either quit or was forced out or had another job to go to. Uh, the Coyotes let some, I don't, it's not named, I don't know if it's a team or some other organization, 
talked to Cheka about a position. They let him. They let that happen, and then apparently. Cheka seemed to want that position, and he had three years left on his contract, and he resigned and quit. And there's been animosity between the two of them ever since. And I imagine in the next little while, probably in the offseason, we're going to find out exactly what happened with that story. So that's something. So uh, right now, um, Sullivan, Steve Sullivan, Mike Sullivan, one of the Sullivans, is the interim GM um, for the moment, and we'll see how that situation goes. For Philadelphia, this should be good. Oscar Lindblom, uh, who had to, I think somewhere about midway through the season, um, had to go treat it, be treated for a rare, I think it's a rare blood disease, uh, cancer, rare blood cancer, or some kind of cancer um, and that's rare. And um, he's re fully recovered, treated, recovered, everything done. He's in camp um, and on the roster for phase four. So he's on the 34 man roster. Not clear whether he'll be able to play. I don't know um, if that's even a good idea. He's probably still susceptible to, if he gets the COVID, it would be pretty bad. I don't know, but he's on the roster, and you got to figure that's got to give Philadelphia a huge boost, you know, motivationally, mor morally, all that stuff. It's a feel-good thing. That's really got to give them a good boost. So look for the Flyers, actually, to probably benefit from that. There have been zero positive tests last week. Uh, in the last week of phase three, the first week, the first uh, batch of tests had revealed two positive tests. The players isolated and are probably already fully recovered. And this past week, the one going into um, the bubbles where they were testing, you know, they were making sure that nobody's got it. So it was heavy testing. They, because they did more tests in the second week than the first week, they had zero positive tests. Zero positives, that's good. That's hopeful that this thing can actually come across and we're going to actually have the games and it'll go right to the end. And let's hope that happens because it's going to be tighter um, in the bubble uh, than it was uh, for phase three. So they should, if they can have zero positive tests for that last week, they should be able to have zero positives through the whole tournament or very minimal positives through the whole tournament. Next up, Major League Baseball. Speaking of that, not doing very well. They did start their season. They're doing the traveling around like always, going city to city, um, without a bubble, without a whatever. Didn't take long, and it is. Uh, I want to say the Mariners, but it's not the Mariners. It is the Marlins. The Marlins, uh, Miami or Florida, um, seem to have been loaded with positive tests. Um, they weren't wearing masks a lot and stuff like that. And now they played against the Phillies just before they had a, all these tests come positive. Um, the Phillies are worried. What do they do? So it seems like the Marlins have to shut down. They don't know if they may have to shut down or um, not play anymore. Uh, what do you do when a team has to uh, go away? I don't know. So it's, uh, I, I imagine Major League Baseball's attempt to get this done is not going to come across. And they're probably going to have to stop. But... That's unknown. We're going to find out, I guess, over the next few days or a week or whatever. Um, Price, is, Price is Montreal's nominee for the King Clancy Award. The King Clancy Award, I do believe Saka Koivu won that, um, is for leadership on and off the ice and humanitarian contributions. Price is a very um, fitting nominee for that. And uh, maybe he'll win. We'll see. Uh, the uh, finals haven't been announced. Now, so why this is a bit of a somber... News of the day. Um, farewell, Mew. Mew is my 20-year-old cat. Um, she's not, no, she didn't, not yet, but um, when she's 20 years old, and she's been, you know, she's she's kind of frail and weak and stuff like that. And in the last week, it's kind of gone downhill. About two weeks ago, she's not stopped eating, but really slowed down to the point where now she's not eating. I, I phoned yesterday, and I have an appointment for tomorrow. And we're going to have to have it put down. She's 20 years old. She had a great life. She had a great life for a cat. Cats are supposed to live to about 13 is their average. She lived like a, a lifetime and a half for a cat and loved every minute of it. She was an outdoor cat. Spent most of her life literally outdoors. And used to come in for supper, uh, for food, and go back out and rarely spent the night in the summer indoors until it got too cold for her and then she'd spend the winter indoors and as soon as she could she was outdoors again so she had a great life i love her to death she was my best friend for many years many many years 20 years uh, ever since we got her she was a little tiny thing 
she'd crawl up on my shoulder. And when I go up and down the stairs to do laundry and stuff, she'd stay on my shoulder up and down the stairs. And then we really, we really bonded. And my uh, German Shepherd, we had a German Shepherd for, uh, she was almost four, 13 and a half, she lived till. And they were best friends. The cat was a year old. The German Shepherd was uh, about four months old when we got her. And they just bonded and were best friends. I'd walk the dog and the cat would walk with me. And everyone loved to see that and it was just great. So Mew, I'm gonna have to say goodbye to her tomorrow. Not looking forward to it. Um, so don't expect to see, after the review for the game, don't expect to see a video from me at least for tomorrow, so I won't be doing any work tomorrow, um, and maybe not till Friday, so I hope you guys understand, I'm pretty sure you will, and um, that's it, so that's my video, if you like to give it a thumbs up, while you're doing that, head down there, there's a comment section, you can leave me a comment on any of the stories I brought to you, and my opinions on them, and do that in the comment section, and if you haven't already, please subscribe, ring that notifications bell, and that's going to get you happier videos, uh, and more like this from uh, me at Talkin' Habs, and uh, you get to your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge, and I'm um, not saying that right, but hey, uh, so that's it. Thanks for watching this video. Um, please stay safe out there. Wear a mask where you're supposed to, and um, yeah, so you can come back and watch more Talking Habs videos, and that's it. Peace out, y'all. See you next video, and um, yeah, that's it. Have a great day.